What's up guys and welcome back to this week's Bourbon of the Week. If you haven't been here before, what we do on this channel is taken the bourbon review concept and kept it simple. Basically, we've broken it down into three categories. Price, taste, drinkability. We use a scale of 10 to rank these bourbons on a ranking sheet to see what you should buy and what you should pass on. If you have been here before, welcome back. I encourage you all to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. But what we have for you today is something special. This is Joseph Magnus out of Joseph Magnus Distilling Company. This is a source bourbon, so I'm excited to see what they can do with the blending and that triple cask finish really interests me. So let's get to it. So here we have the Joseph Magnus. Like I said, this is triple cask finish. This is a sourced bourbon. So what they mainly focus on with this company is the finishing and the blending of these products. So I'm interested to see how this compares to something that's only been finished once or that hasn't been finished at all. So here we go. Everybody knows before we get started, time for the traditional sip. Cheers. That's not too bad. So this is a 100 proof bourbon. It's non-age stated, but that's kind of weird to me because everything that I've read online says that it's probably in that 12 year range. And if that's true, if this is a 12 year old bourbon, then I don't know why they wouldn't display it proudly on the bottle. Now it is a source bourbon. So maybe they're blending some stuff that's 12 years. Maybe they're blending some newer stuff and that's how they can keep the cost down. Although it's not down that low, but if it is, you know, a mixture of different aged bourbons, then that's probably why they're not putting it on here. It's an undisclosed mash bill and they don't tell you who they source it from. So everything about this bottle is a mystery except for the fact that it's triple cast finish. It's done in two sherry and one cognac barrel. So you can tell that that's their selling point. That's what they want you to drink it for. They put it in a cool looking bottle and they tell you it's triple cast finish. You've probably never heard of it before or if you've had, you heard of it because of Joseph Magnus. So because they're doing something unique, it's definitely a good selling point for them. But enough about that. Let's get into drinkability on this. This is a 100 proof bourbon. And it sips very good. With that undisclosed mash bill, I don't think it's a high rye. I almost, it sips like a weeded, but it does have a little bit of a rye kick to it. So let's take one last sip and let's figure this out. Yeah, see, it doesn't, it does have a little bit of a spice at the end. But for 100 proof, this sips pretty good. No real ethanol kick to it. You definitely get a lot of flavor with this, which is going to do well in the uh, taste profile. But as for drinkability, this is pretty good. I'm going to give this like an 8.8 .8 when it comes to drinkability. So getting into taste on this, that's where this thing is. I don't want to say it shines, but it's definitely flavorful. When you finish something in a different barrel, you're trying to pull out different flavors. A lot of time you'll see like a port wine or a sherry wine finish, and they're trying to pull out those flavors from that wine barrel. So being in two different sherry casks and then the cognac cask, they're definitely trying to pull out flavors. And you'd almost think this would be an experiment that wouldn't work. But I got to be honest with you, it works pretty well. It definitely gets rid of a little bit of that ethanol kick. And then it also puts a lot of different flavors here together that you're trying to pick out. You've got your traditional bourbon flavors still, your vanilla, your caramel. Then you get a lot of oak and a lot of almost leather, but it's not overwhelming. It's there. You can taste it, but it's not like all oak or all leather. And then you also get like a dried fruit, like a brown sugar note. It's pretty much everything that you can experience in different bottles you're experiencing in this at some point during the sip. The only knock that I'll have on this is it's very short and it's very dry. I don't like a dry finish. It almost feels like your mouth's dry after you take a sip or two on it. So you're going to drink a lot of it. Be careful. It is a hundred proof, but I don't hate this flavor profile. It's very complex. It's very different. Every time you sip it, you're getting something new. And every time you sip it, you're not hating it. You like it more and more each time you take another sip. So as for taste on this, it's going to get another pretty good score. I'm going to give it like a, I'm going to give it like an 8.9 when it comes to taste. So getting into price, I actually want to talk to you after this week's bourbon bomb of the week, cause that's going to factor in what the price is and if it commands that price tag. Let's do this. Cheers. For this week's bourbon bomb of the week, let's go over what it means to be finished. Now this is triple cask finish, but what does that actually mean? Well, let's go back to the beginning of the process. When you first distill whiskey, it comes out of the still known as white dog. This is the clear liquid that you get before it goes into the first barrel. Now to be considered bourbon, the first barrel that it must go into is new American charred oak barrels, and it can go into that for any amount of time. The second it touches that barrel, it becomes a bourbon. Now, if it's under two years, you have to tell me on your bottle that it's under two years. And if it's under four years, you're not allowed to call it straight bourbon. Let's get into finishing though. When you finish it, you take it out of those new American charred oak barrels and you can put it into any other barrel that you want. In this case, they put it into a sherry barrel. Then they put it into another sherry barrel. 
Then they put it into a cognac barrel. So that's the triple cask after it's already in the new American charred oak barrel. So what does that mean for you? That means they're pulling flavors from all of these barrels to give you a product that you probably haven't experienced before. Some people like Woodford, they double oaked it. Jim Beam, they double oaked it. They put it into another new American charred oak barrel rather than putting it into a wine barrel or anything else. So that's what finishing is. It's an awesome process. And the fact that they could do that three times on this is probably why we get the price tag we get. So let's get back into price on this. Cheers. So that's going to bring us back into price on this. And the question is, is it worth the price tag? This is a $90 bottle. And after we just discussed the laborious activity of moving it from barrel to barrel to barrel to barrel, and the fact that it's a 12 year old bourbon and the fact that it's a hundred proof and the fact that it's sourced, you start to understand why they're charging $90 for it. Now, none of that's your fault. The question is, is the juice inside that worth $90? And I'm on the, this is the high end side of things for me. I think $90 is a lot to ask for a bottle of bourbon, no matter what kind of experimental thing you're trying to pull off. It's a very good bottle of bourbon, but I wouldn't pay $90 for it, at least not again. I would probably drink it at somebody else's house if they had it there, but I wouldn't put this on my shelves again. And the fact is, it's just, you can buy a lot of bottles of bourbon for $90. You can buy a lot of good bottles of bourbon for $90. So to put that price tag on this, I'm glad I got to experience it. But that's where it's going to stay. It's going to stay on the shelf. I'm going to try not to drink it. And I'm going to let my friends try it to have that triple cast experience. And that's all you really get in here is a, you know, like an experimental type of bourbon. And they did it very well. They do it very well. And they're going to continue to get people to buy it because it is different. And because nobody else is doing the process that way. But when you're asking $90, it's a little too much for me. I'm going to give this like a 6.9 when it comes to the price. So before I get into the average, I did want to tell you the story behind Joseph Magnus. It's just like every other bourbon story that you ever heard. Pre-prohibition style bourbon got shut down because of prohibition. And then some great, great grandson found it under the floorboards and they had to resurrect the family name and bring it back to us. But this is an experiment that went right. It didn't go wrong. They're doing something right over there. Hopefully they can one day bring that price point down whether they have to stop sourcing it and do it themselves or maybe even drop the age a little bit on that just so they can drop the price point. But this came out at an 8.2, which I think is a very fair spot for it. The price that it commands doesn't allow it to go much higher, but yet the juice is so good that I don't think it belongs any lower. But as for this, that's where we're going to leave it. I've also heard that this is a very good bottle to try with a cigar. So I'm going to go try this. This is a Henry Clay 2018. I know nothing about cigars, so if you have any recommendations, please let me know. But in the meantime, guys, make sure you go over and check me out at Bourbon of the Week on Instagram. Every Tuesday at 4 p.m., we drop an image of the bourbon that we're going to review that very next day. You can go on and try and guess the score that I give, and if you guess the closest, you're going to get a shout out on the channel, as well as entered in a monthly drawing. So last week, we had Wiggle coming in at a 7.47, and we had a good friend of ours, Samit from Madeira Diaries, who we just collaborated with, come in with a guess of 7.4. Make sure you go over and check him out. He has a YouTube channel as well. But that's it for us today. Make sure you click that like. Make sure you click that subscribe. Don't drink and drive. Drink responsibly. And as always, wash your hands. Pandemic ain't over, y'all. Cheers.